Hi, I'm Mathilde Walker Bio. I'm the curator of the, of the exhibition Le Bruit de la Chair, Partition pour Gina Pan. I am joining you uh, from New York City, Lenape Hawkins, and Sedit and um, traditional homeland of the Lenape people. And I'm very happy to be with Janine French Nuchli, one of the residents of the 34th edition of uh, the Atelier International at FRAC. Van Gwenzi, Shori, Janine Freina Jutli Vaji. I'm a Vantakwichin artist with mixed settler uh, Dutch and Czech ancestry, and I'm currently video calling from my from my house in my homelands of the Vantakwichin First Nation, which is situated in Old Crow Yukon, the northernmost community in the Yukon, and it's right beside Alaska. And uh, my nation is actually crossed by two colonial borders, the US Canadian border and the NWT Yukon border. And so our people, the Gwich'in Nation, closely mirror the, uh, the nation of the porcupine caribou herd. And we've been interdependent since time immemorial. So I think it's also important to, uh, to honor the caribou whenever I have the chance to introduce myself and also speech the importance of protecting their calving ground. Um, I think what would be great is also to talk about your the, the process uh, of working uh, across distance, your choice of staying on your territory uh, for the residency. It was important to me to be able to do this residency from my homelands, to make the political choice to not travel to France, but to occupy the time and space of the residency in my homelands. And thinking about Gina Payne's relationship to her land and to her body in that integral relationship of land and body and embodiment of land, it made absolute sense for me to stay in my homelands and continue on building those relationships, which for the Vantakwichin people are since time immemorial. And for my work, I created a large, like eight foot by four foot steel image using grease and rust. And it's an image of me laying in the land um, at an important place, Tichik, for, for my people, for the Vantakwich Inn. And um, I also was drawn to this method of image making because I'm also thinking about the sovereignty of the material and the sovereignty of the image. And as an Indigenous person, I'm deeply invested in sovereignty. And I'm deeply invested in the politics of the body and the politics of land. So in being able to engage with uh, Gina Penn's oeuvre and the collection of her work at FRAC was incredible for me. And to think about uh, politics of the body, politics of land, politics of race, gender, identity, and also our situated knowledges, how those get embodied and enmeshed in our materials and what we also choose to both display to the public and what we choose to withhold. What parts of the performance are something that are just for you and the land and what parts of that performance are for or for a viewer, what parts do you choose to let other people into? In my own practice, this was a rare moment where I show an image of my body, point blank period. For most of my practice, I am invested in creating performances that leave residue and the performative gesture is embodied in the material and the remnants and sometimes dust or noise that are left looping and accumulating and dispersing in the space. And for me, the choice to not include images of my body in my performance-based practice has been a political choice. I don't trust images. I don't trust how they circulate. They're so powerful. And as an Indigenous person, I'm queer, I'm non-binary, but I recognize that I'm perceived as female. And there is a long legacy of settler colonial violence and extractive gaze. It's like if people are familiar with Edward Curtis photographs of Indigenous people, most people know his work. He traveled around with a tickle trunk of regalia and wigs and got people to wear them to fit his idea of what an Indigenous person looks like. And that those images are haunting all of us still. And I don't just mean Indigenous people, they're also haunting you. They're creating a false image in your imaginary and then you project that back onto us. 
So as an artist, it's my duty to talk about sovereignty, to talk about global colonial struggles and settler violence. And it's also important for me to push back against those images that are somewhat insidious. And then also thinking about the, for the most part, the history of performance based art is images of a certain kind of body. And I don't want to be perpetuating that because there's danger there. But I found a way through this residency to anchor them, to anchor an image of my body and an image of my people's homelands in a way that I think can challenge a viewer to not think beautiful northern untouched native landscape or like perceived native woman in a landscape like lone indian in a landscape like all those things are such tropes and are so dangerous that this creating this image that is deteriorating as you're looking at it right the rust pieces are falling off onto the floor and the image will continue to change over time because part of it is um oxidized metal that's exposed to the elements and even though a museum space a gallery space are controlled environments it will still continue to change and breathe so yeah i think that's um that's uh, really interesting the way also the work can be seen as a performance as it is like you know the material is is degrading over time is changing over time and you can see also body in, in as it changes which makes a lot of sense also in terms of relation with Ashina Pan's work was using a lot of images to think about the body and how it lives through time and materiality. So maybe what will be interesting is also talking about the another work um, developed as part of this um, project of residency, so Cure, that you presented also um, uh, in, the, in the exhibition, if you want to say a few words about this. I did another performance that did not feel safe to share images of, but instead that gesture is embodied in this smoked work shirt. And what I did is I, I tattooed myself using snow. So I melted snow water and I tattooed myself with just the water, right? So bringing the land into my body and knowing that there will be very little trace in my body. Yeah, I chose to wear the shirt, gather the snow water, and then tattoo myself while also wearing the shirt after the tattoo process, which, you know, for me can also be a form of healing. And for many people who are, who have tattoos, right? Everybody has their own relationship to it. Why? There's some catharsis there. And then also thinking about literally bringing the land through our bodies. And for this one, I'm very interested in how the smell of the smoke holds and triggers or brings up very specific memories for people. So when having the smell of the smoke in the gallery space, it when you first experience it, it can fill the room. And then over time it dissipates and you have to have a more like close intimate relationship with that garment or with this artwork. And in an institutional space, it can, it summons something different. So I also want to, I also want to invite that. And then what does it also mean for the people who are involved in transporting the work so far? And it's something that is so legal. You're bringing a shirt from one place to another in luggage, right? But because of that smell, there's also a threat. And so maybe if you want to um, talk a little bit more about the um, paying the land for my gift, uh, just presenting the video to, uh, to us. And this work, you know, I talk about being grumpy about images and this was, I think that was actually the first time that I showed an image of my body, but it's a 16 minute film that fades from a black screen to a blurred image and then back to a black screen. I live in an incredibly mosquito-y country. If any of you have ever been to the Arctic, you might have a slight idea, but it's almost 
unfathomable the amount of mosquitoes that we have and the mosquitoes are also important to our homelands as much as they are can be really frustrating to uh to navigate when you're in the bush they're also so important because they keep the caribou moving and they're an um, important part of our of our ecosystems up here so in paying the land for my gifts it's a 16 minute performance where i expose my entire back in a marsh to the mosquitoes and thinking about um yeah it's just it's an offering to the land and the land has given me so much and i also honestly have a very large amount of privilege i've gotten to travel all over the world i've gotten to be in residencies like at frac and have my work shown there and um it's just important to find different ways of giving back to the land and when people visit other people's homelands especially when you're visiting an indigenous territory like how are what kind of a guest are you being how are you being a guest in someone else's homelands and it's important for us to always be thinking about how do we how do we benefit from another person's displacement. And so for paying the land for my gifts i'm inviting people to think about that where they're currently situated and then also offering up an offering that I gave to the land and what does it mean to make a performance that is just for the land that is just for the mosquitoes. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Janine. Perfect. Have a good day. Bye bye.